Awkward moments on Joe Rogan are certainly a rare sighting, but they do still happen occasionally. So let's begin by looking at the Joe Rogan experience number 958, when the conversation between Joe and Jordan Peterson became so deep that the two completely forgot what they were talking about in the first place. You can say, well, yeah, I've got all these flaws, but look at what I'm trying to do. Right. That's the real ground of self-respect. Well. I missed the, I, I'm off the track with the question. Ground of self-respect, I can't remember what you asked me. So, we'll have to go to a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, how did we get on this? We were, um... You asked about the evolutionary <laughs> basis of... Oh, we got that. We, that was a long time ago. I know, it's a rabbit hole that just doesn't disappear. But where were we just now? Um, remember where we were just now? <laughs> distracted by something else that's happening right now. I'll give you, let you know. What is it? Comey just got fired by Trump a little bit ago. Oh. And uh, Twitter is a, a blaze about oh, what's I'm going sure. right now. This is a little off topic. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you want to talk about a figure. Oh, I know. We were talking about men. Yes. We were talking about men and what motivates them. As you can see, the conversation did eventually get back on track and the podcast finished with no further hiccups. However, this wasn't the only time on an episode where Joe didn't know what else to say. Take for example the Joe Rogan experience number 1726 with Chuck Polinick, which as a whole was an awesome podcast, except for certain parts in the beginning. Now it seemed like the biggest problem was that the two were discussing a topic which didn't have much substance, and as a result Joe would say things which received no response at all. There was little three foot tall furry people that were living on an island in Flores. It's wild. While it felt as though the two were saying anything they could in order to keep the conversation going. The Gates Foundation has been really active in that area, I heard. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> mm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah it could be. I mean, we tried vaccines on them. They used them to experiment. Could be. However, the most awkward silence came at the end of this topic when, in a rare instance, it seemed as though Joe completely ran out of things to talk about. Whoa. That's where cuckold comes from? Yeah. Huh. I guess it makes sense. I guess that's a logical origin. I've never heard that before. It's kind of tragic. It is tragic. Well, birds are tragic, period. So a weird creature. You know? They they get to fly. But they don't live very long. They get eaten by other birds. Perhaps Joe and Chuck were simply being highly introspective during their conversation about birds. But what happens when a guest brings up a serious topic while Joe sits there laughing? This is what happened during the Joe Rogan experience number 1532 with Mike Tyson, which got a bit awkward after Joe interpreted one of Mike's serious videos as somewhat of a joke. I did that video and I was in bed for a week. <laughs> that was 30 seconds and I was in bed for a week. And it's not funny because it made me realize that you was there out it is right there. Yeah. That wasn't really cool. After Mike ended this first interaction by stating that wasn't really cool, another period of awkward conflict occurred. What does it mean um, when fighting gets you, gets you erect? What does that mean? It's a good question. It's orgasmic sometimes. Mm. Yeah. It means you're getting excited. Yeah. But saying that, it gets you orgasmic. That's a strange thing to say. Well, that's just what I want. I wanted to find out because you're really bright. And I thought you would <laughs> figure it No, I'm being very serious. <clears throat> no, I know. I, I know you're being serious, but I mean, no one will understand that other than you. Which eventually resulted in even more uncomfortable silence. Alexander the Great was 32 and he conquered the known world. Yeah. In 10 years. And so thinking about that as a, as a young man. Absolutely. However, this wasn't the only time that inviting a fighter onto the podcast ended with an extremely awkward moment, as during the Joe Rogan experience number 607, the audience had to witness this. It was a really tough fight for me too. You know, I had a, it was a really bad camp. It was probably the worst camp of my career. I, uh, my dad had passed away like three weeks before the fight and 
like two or three days after that. Why does that look so shitty, Jamie? My cousin passed away. So it was like, pull it back. So is it our computer that's doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the computer. it's a YouTube video. Is it really that bad? What do we got to do to fix that? Focusing on a YouTube video's quality instead of the comments made by your guest about the passing of their father definitely makes for some uncomfortable viewing. However, it's not like this was the only time where things got awkward because Joe wasn't paying attention. If I get fired here, whatever, I'll just go do Joe Rogan next week and I'll be fine. Anyway, I thought that was funny. No? What? I was like, I, I literally that what you thought. I literally thought that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it would be funny. Well, it could have been funny. Yeah. I was booked up, though. No, it was fine. I, it was just funny to <laughs> truly... Because I remember somebody contacted me, like, to have you on. And I was like, I don't have any room. Like, for a yeah. long... I could do, like, an emergency podcast, but I'm like, let me let I'm, this dude ride this out. Yeah. And then we'll do one eventually. Truly glad that that did not happen. Because I would have come in emotional. Yeah. I would have come in, like, guns what blazing. Me isn't fair. Right. You know? And then... And I never felt that way, like the whole time I was like, I kind of get it. Accidentally inviting yourself onto the podcast is clearly a pretty good way to make Joe uncomfortable. But if you want to make things really weird, then all you need to do is give Joe a couple of compliments, as was shown in the Joe Rogan experience number 1518 with David Cho. Now don't get me wrong, this episode is a contender for the best Joe Rogan podcast ever created. And part of the reason for this was that Dave kept giving Joe these uncomfortably wholesome compliments. What is your... Uh threshold with receiving compliments uh, my threshold yeah what's your comfort level <sighs> i haven't I seen you in a long time uh, yeah it's been a while I don't know. can i give you weird. can i give you okay five sure okay um <laughs> you you're you only look better as you get older oh thank you. you have a beautifully shaped skull <laughs> like as an artist as a sculptor like i painted you Yes. I don't like the painting anymore. I think I can do a better one now. It's but awesome. It's an awesome painting. All artists and sculptors out there listening, paint this guy's skull. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, you're unbelievably uh, curious, inspirational. You give me hope. You're funny. You're entertaining. And you're a leader. You're a perfectly imperfect, unrepeatable miracle of the universe. Wow. That's heavy. You're great, man. Well, that's very sweet of you. I yeah. appreciate you. Yeah. Thank I, you very much, man. That's very nice of you. Before Joe would put the awkwardness back on Dave in a fairly wholesome way. Some people can't be themselves and not good at it. You're really good at being David Cho. Thank you. <laughs> you're really good I, I'm, at it. I'm horrible at taking compliments, by the way. Oh, so thank well, you. It's uncomfortable for everybody, I think, unless you're a real creep. You did, you did it great right now. That was good. Could I have, could I have done more? <laughs> could I have given you like... No. However, this wasn't the only time on the Joe Rogan experience where too much praise put an instant stop to the conversation. Congrats, also, by the way, on Spotify. Oh, thank you. I know. Crazy, right? So well deserved, man. Thank you. God damn. Nice um, sorry, I didn't want to forget. No I didn't want to forget. Yeah, dude, I've been ultra paying attention to my health. Then there was the Joe Rogan experience number 1572, which became awkward after Joe accidentally gave himself a few too many compliments. How are you so good at rock, paper, scissors? It's just, you know, skill, muscle, intuition. Intuition. Can we play right now? You want to play? Yes. Oh, but I only play for stakes. Okay. What do you want to play for? If I win, I do the programming on your show for a week. No, that's worth a lot of money. What kind of money? What do you think I'm gonna, not, a, I'm not saying like the ads or whatever. I'm saying be like, like programming, like who's gonna be yeah, on? Yeah, who's gonna be on? That's not possible. We're booked up months and months in advance. You were so confident until no, just now. We no, can no, pick no. A month, that, that's a few just, months that's, off. Whatever. That's ridiculous to flip a coin on that. There's, there's no chance. Do you think that there's something of equivalent value? No. There's no, nothing. That? Nothing that I can no. do. No. There's nothing that you could give me that would be worth a week of programming on the show. What are you gonna give me? You'd have to give me what, a spectacular uh, amount of money. How about five bucks? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, it's gotta be. Come stakes. on, man. Be twenty bucks. Stakes. Twenty oh, bucks. I got twenty on. bucks no, in my no. pocket. Wait, money is off the table. We can't. Do Money's money. off yeah. the table. Forget that. All right. It sounds like someone's scared to lose at rock paper scissors. It sounds like someone else is scared to lose. At no, rock, you're paper. asking me for something that's ridiculous. You don't have anything. You don't have anything that's worth a week um, of programming on this show. You don't have it. That's rough. It doesn't exist. That's rough. No, it doesn't. It literally doesn't exist. Like there's not. It, like you don't. There's nothing. That you can have that you could offer me that I couldn't buy myself. I'll make you. Or, I'll make. I'll. I'll no, no, no. It'll be interesting. No, no, no. Talking with them. You can't. 
No. no. All right, fine. All right. But that doesn't we do anything for me. However, if you really want to make the podcast awkward, then you're going to have to touch on politics, which is what happened during the Joe Rogan experience number 1882, when a fairly innocent comment about a political candidate escalated into a very unpleasant exchange. We look for someone who makes us feel good, and they just decide this is how I'm voting. You know, like yeah. that's, I mean, that was a lot of people's perspectives on Hillary Clinton. I talked no, to a lot I'm of people sure that hated- No, I'm pretty sure everyone loved her. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she she the won. most loved. I I was I I liked Elizabeth Warren. She's Why? cool. What? I just like same. I liked her. I like She's I like her tenacity. Artist. Yeah, but but okay, who isn't? Yeah, Bernie Sanders. Okay, but did you vote for artist. Bernie? He wasn't available to vote for. Did you vote in the? I didn't vote for in the primary. In the primaries, right? Yeah. Uh, I did. But I had him on my podcast, and he was very sincere. Okay, cool. I've I had think... my mom on my podcast. You want to flex? I'm just saying. I think he's very sincere. Joe and Eliza were able to hash out their disagreement in a relatively mature way. However, what happens when Joe accidentally touches on a topic that the guest specifically asked him not to talk about? This is what happened during the Joe Rogan experience number 1035 with Paul Stamets, which hit a bit of a bump after Joe asked about the negative side effects of mushrooms. What are the negative benefit or the negative effects of this? This is an explosive uh, uh, area of conversation and that uh, puts my life in danger. So I, I reserve the right not to answer your question. Whoa, I didn't expect that. It puts your life in danger talking about portobello mushrooms? He's looking at me silently. I will uh, re respectfully move on. Thank you. Um, so anybody who's interested, just go Google that and get back to me. <laughs>